So I'm Dr. Anna, and uh, I have been working at the Nelly Berman School of Music for about uh, six, seven years. And uh, today I will be teaching and listening to you from my house in Philadelphia. So who is there? I see George is there. George, how old are you? Seven. Okay. And what are you playing today? Mozart, Finis, Sonatina, and the last movement. That is great. So then I see Anastasia is there. there. Hi. My name is Anastasia. I'm 13, and I'll be playing Allegro Passionata by St. Sons. Very difficult piece. I'm looking forward to hear. And we have the next participant. Hi, um, I'm Ryan, and I'm 14, and I will be playing uh, Bach, English Suite. Number two, uh, the prelude. Great program. So let's do uh, it in following order. Let's start with George, then let's do English Suite, and then um, Sin Sans. How about that? Okay. And, uh, oh, I think we have another participant. Wait a, a second. Yes. Let's see who entered. We will see if someone will join. It takes time. So uh, then each person will play and we will discuss the details as we always do during the performance class. Okay? Okay. Okay, so then George will st start. Mozart, Venice, Sonatina. <laughs> comments. Uh, okay, let's start from um, Anastasia. Let's start from her. Okay, um, I'll go first. Um, I really like the sound and the dynamics. It was really cheerful. Um, yeah. Yeah, definitely very cheerful and good character. Do you have something else to add? No. Okay, so who else wants to say? Um, I like the dynamics as well. And I like... Um, I also liked... Uh, there was like... It, it felt very like happy. Yes, very good character. Definitely uh, you enjoyed uh, 
listening and playing. It was really joyful. So, uh, I probably would also add some comment. I have your music here. And I thought that the music was written for early piano. So it was written for forte piano. And uh, early forte pianos are very similar in sound to harpsichord. The sound is not quite loud and uh, uh, the articulation really matters. So when you are playing early music of Mozart or Haydn, consider playing with very good articulation by fingertips. Uh, for example, when you start Allegretto, you can use a lot of fingertips at the end of each slur, mostly not by hand, but by fingers only. And uh, you could practice slowly to uh, get better precision, like this. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. It is like playing right from the key as you would uh, play directly to the string, not from above. And there is the spot where you have that kind of something like this. And uh, some parts are more like accompaniment. So the second thing uh, has left hand as the... I'm trying to... I mean, you can do do you know where I'm playing? This is art. You probably recognize by here. So that part sounds slightly differently, right? When the beginning hands are quite e equal. Ta -da -ta -da -pa -da -pa -pa, right? So here we have definitely melodic line and an accompaniment. So we need to highlight the top voice with precise and beautiful articulation and the left hand could be much softer. So I, I think you're playing with great character, you keep your tempo very even, uh, you switch dynamics really well and uh, two things you could think about would be using more fingertips at the end of each slur and simply playing closer and more precisely so your articulation is very clear, clo closer to the keys. And uh, the second thing is when you have accompaniment played much softer, much softer and uh, shaped in a very gentle way. Okay? Okay, let's give again applause to George. Let's do it together. Ready? Can you hear us, George? Yeah. Did you hear this? Okay. So, next we are going to play Bach, right? Okay, let's see.
Yeah, we were clapping. Yeah. Okay, great. Great job, such difficult piece. Uh, for how long have you been practicing it? Um, six, six weeks. How long? Six weeks. Um, oh, great. Um, originally, this piece was written for harpsichord, uh, and uh, there are some harpsichord elements in this. But I love how detailed is your articulation and uh, you play very clean, you definitely shape and uh, you have good understanding of Baroque music. I can tell that you, uh, you didn't start from this piece, you played probably many compositions of Bach before. Is it right? Um, I don't play manually, like couple. Uh, what did you play? Did you play well-tempered clavier? Like some of um, Reddit and Snooks? I played uh, the Invention number eight and some other things that I don't know. Okay. So Bach is the composer which probably 
he probably is the most well-known composer in the world. And uh, when he was writing this music, he was not um, as well known as he is now, as famous. Apparently his uh, sons were more famous, more well-known composers than uh, Egan Sebastian Bach. And uh, he developed the polyphonic music into the level which is still not uh, reachable. It is like incredibly uh, developed and intellectual. And uh, at the same time, his writing is very clear and logical. Uh, this piece is written in the imitational manner, and the prelude for Suite is quite long. It is the introduction, but uh, he made it very long. He started writing preludes, which are uh, much longer than they used to be. Quite often, prelude would be just a little introduction, and then the most of Suite would happen. So he changed it um, in his English Suite. Uh, I think you played very, very well, and I have few suggestions, but let's see what the audience think. Let's see what uh, everybody else can suggest. George, would you start? Uh, he has a steady beat. Steady beat? Okay. Do you think it is good? Yeah. Definitely, right? <laughs> very precise pulse. Okay. That is true, yes. What else do you think? Uh, nothing else. Did you like the piece? Yeah. You also play some Bach, right? Uh, yes, yeah, some. Some probably little preludes, right? <laughs> yeah. Great. You have something else to suggest? No, um, you're good. Maybe no. some more dynamics. I don't know. Okay. Let's see if I can be helpful here as well. Uh, I think you could bring more theme. There is a subject there. You probably know about this, right? So the subject starts with the score. And it is quite short subject, just that. And then the left hand starts. So it is that short. And when subject appears again, you can every time emphasize it. Did you plan to do this? Did you already plan about subject being emphasized with different sound, just simply louder sound? Yeah. I think you can bring it even more. And uh, uh, on harpsichord, dynamic is not possible. And uh, to emphasize the subject, you would have to bring it to articulation. So you would introduce the subject with the articulation you set in the beginning, you plan in the beginning. And then you keep this articulation through the piece, simply making it recognizable. So think about more uh, clear articulation, just as it would be the um, only thing you have if, if you would not have dynamic, if you would have to emphasize this uh, subject. Maybe be a little bit more articulated. And this three notes. And each time. So we would hear the imitation uh, in each voice. So it is kind of uh, written as a fugue, right? Similar to the fugue. So something else I would suggest. So wherever you have the theme, bring it out more. And not just by the dynamic, but also by very recognizable articulation. And I wanted to ask you about your ornament. How exactly do you uh, play the ornament? Let's find some place. For example, page 19, uh, fourth line. Fourth line, third measure. There is a trill there. How do you play it? So play it again, please. Yes, so when you have cadence, uh, you also have this wavy line. Wavy line in Baroque music means four notes, and they're supposed to be played from above, if it is just a wavy line, from above the note. So let's say, guys, this is very important uh, information. Let's say you have note three, and you have a wavy line on top. It means that we need to start treating not from A, but from B. And you need to play at least four notes. Let's all practice. Uh, George. If you have wavy line on note F, how would you play it? Uh, 
this way we uh, line is called differently in many different uh, uh, countries of Europe. So let's just call it wavy line for now because in French and German and um, Spanish it will be always different. So if you have note E, you have to drill from F, F E F E. If, if you have note G, you have to drill from A, A G A G. And uh, four notes would be at least four notes, and then you can add more. George, would you like to try to trill like that? Yeah. Okay. So if you have wavy line on top of note G. On top of note G? G, yes. So where do you start? From G or from A? And play just exactly four notes. Four notes. Okay. okay. Um, Anastasia, do you want to try? Sure. Do you have note F? Right. And now, if you guys have cadence, like in this situation on uh, page 19, you, you all don't have the score, but this is definitely a cadence here in the left hand. So this is cadential chord, dominant, tonic. So this most likely will be a uh, drill which is longer, not just four notes, but uh, at least six, eight notes and more. And uh, the way you can play it, to start slightly slower, emphasizing the upper note, ta -ta 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 and then speed up. This is how it is supposed to be played in the manner of uh, 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 Baroque music, uh, if you would play on original instrument. Then we have played the line. So four notes would be like this. Since it is clear that we make it longer. And we emphasize slightly the first note as it would be slower and then faster. Uh, do you want to try this cadence? Yes, perfect. So you have to emphasize the beginning and then you speed up as you just did. And then let's check the other spot with trills. On page 20, this first and second measure. Let's just play them maybe slower, guys. Listen very carefully because there are several types of trills and let's talk about them. Okay. Page 20, first and second measure, please. So here we have another trill, which has wavy line and uh, uh, the vertical line on top. It is sometimes called mordant. And uh, this mordant is three notes. So now we're supposed to trill right from the note, play down and come back. So let's say we have, it is wavy line and it is crossed like this. You can probably imagine that. You all, this is the most um, useful uh, ornament in all countries of Europe, then each country would develop their own uh, ornaments. But this type was useful everywhere, so it was kind of general type. So this wavy line plus vertical line on top means we need to have three notes and we play right from the note. Let's say it is note C. We play from C, we go down and we play back. So if the previous was from above, four notes. That one is three notes. Then, sometimes we have chords which we roll, right? It is quite a useful thing in harpsichord playing, because uh, when we play on piano, we can use dynamics, but on harpsichord, this was, would really decorate the texture. So the only rule we sometimes forget, when we um, roll the chord on the piano, we need to make it more evenly, as it would be phrasal chord. Look. So it is not just whatever uh, uneven notes, but it is more balanced, da, 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 like that. It is like as you would phrase vertically, like da, 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 like very expressive chords. Do you want to try? Okay, let's each do it. First, let's, let's do actual chord um, from the suite. Ryan, would, would you try this chord just rolling more in, in phrasal way? So that is like, as you would shape phrase vertically, like ta-ta-ta-dum. So that would be more in the manner of um, 
authentic playing. Uh, let's each try. Oh, you did great. Anastasia, would you play C minor? Whatever amount. You can play six, eight notes, whatever you want. Uh, yes, C minor and... Uh, yes, maybe roll slightly faster and make it more even. Ta -da 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 -da. And you also hold it like that. Okay. And another thing, talking about uh, playing Bach and Baroque music in general, is motivic development. Uh, guys, motivic development is very important uh, in uh, Bach's music because he doesn't write exactly with the beat. He will check motives. Look how they look like. Some start. Let's move to the beginning so you recognize them. So if you start right from the beginning, I'm playing in slow tempo. Look. So the modes are not the same as a uh, uh, beat, not like... Quite often Bach uh, moves them from second to the first note. So it is like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. Look how it sounds. So I played this stop so you would notice. Do you see it is not beat the first beat, but it is rather from the second note to the first beat. Now if you don't stop, this is how it sounds. So you're playing evenly, but you listen melodic line differently by motives. When you're playing Bach, especially when you have very, um, uh, very uh, intense texture, when you have both hands playing the passages, you can use this a lot. Or some sequences like this, if you would check page 17. Or maybe when you have both hands, even better. So when you have um, same thing on and on and on sequential motion. From second note to the first, this way you, uh, your your phrases are much more expressive and well balanced. Three things. How you roll the chords, uh, how you uh, play your embellishments. The embellishments uh, go exactly on the beat in the Baroque music. Then it changes slightly. But on the Baroque music, it, in the Baroque music, it goes on the beat with the first uh, note, like ta-da-da. First note is the beat, not ta-da-da. And uh, if you have cadence, it is more than four notes. And it is the trill. And if you roll the chord, make it in a phrasal manner. And you can listen to a different uh, motivic development to make your phrases be more expressive. Okay, let's listen uh, to some Sin Sans. Very exciting piece. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay, everybody is on? Okay, we are ready. Thank you. 
great. Thank you. Much exciting piece. Looks like you really like it. Yeah. Uh, for how long have you been working on it? Uh, I started it two years ago, and then I did. I only learned like three or four pages, and then I gave up on it. <laughs> it and is then, difficult. Uh, I came. I had another teacher after that. What, um, and then I had eager, and then we started it up again. I think six months ago. So. Yeah, there, there is difficulties, and it is, it is difficult in form, and there are some challenging technical moments, right? So, yeah. on one side, on one side, it is like they inspiring and uh, bright and great uh, characters, and on the other side, it is a lot of work, right? Yeah. Okay, let's see what, what we can get, what kind of comments. George, what do you think? And I like her octaves. Yeah, exciting octaves, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> right. And very long piece, isn't it? Yeah. A lot of fast playing. Okay, Ryan, would you suggest something as well? Um, I like uh, I liked her arpeggios and uh, articulation, very precise. Thank you. I think it's very light as well, very light articulation. What is difficult to play because uh, passages are not uh, written in such a way where you can play everything under the fingers. It is quite wide in uh, intervals and it is difficult to play light this way, right? Because it's simply not comfortable. Right. Especially that. But I think you are doing great. Right. Would, would you have some suggestions in addition to the comment? No? Okay, so I, I think you are playing very well and uh, I like your freedom in many episodes. I just thought that sometimes for better form you could have more equal tempos sometimes. So the composer writes quite often like quarter note is equal a dotted quarter note. Or uh, he writes that uh, this one is dolce, a tempo, then a, a little bit of rallentando, and then again back to tempo. So he's, he's very specific about his tempo. And uh, as I know, Sinsans loves uh, fantasy like pieces. When uh, there is another uh, uh, Allegra Appassionata for cello, right? Yeah. Probably everybody knows. Also, very virtuosic. On the other hand, it has a lot of flexibility. Uh, but Sinsans is very precise in his tempos where he wants them to be flexible and uh, where he wants them to be precise. So maybe check this. We have a lot of uh, flexibility now, but some tempos could be more close to each other, just like exact. Uh, precision in tempo. Okay. Also, in slower uh, episodes, I think you could keep longer line. You're playing beautifully in, in, and even through the screen we can hear your beautiful sound and tone and I think the pedaling is very beautiful as well. Um, I thought that sometimes you could have more direction in your phrasing. Developing it sometimes with crescendo and simply moving toward the destination because each phrase has the direction. At the end, uh, when, when you play these octaves, I think again you can uh, consider two measures phrase, like longer phrasing. Like moving in between one C sharp, then octaves to the next C sharp, and so on. So, like in two measures rather than in half or one measure. You want to try this? Just last two lines, maybe. Especially in octaves, it's quite difficult to phrase because um, octaves evolve us to be more versatile in phrasing, right? Reacting mostly on each chord on each octave by itself. So let's see, maybe you could even start, I don't know, somewhere. But last four lines. Would you mind playing again? Yeah, sure. Okay, last four lines to the end. Uh, 
I, I don't have my iPad stopped working, so I play from the phone. And uh, I think that you, I will play slower tempo. For example, this part is more phrasal. <laughs> Uh, do you work on each hand individually? Yeah. Maybe play just the left hand. Let's see if you could play. Um, if you look at the page, play, play the second and third line and then stop. Because your first destination is this triple forte. Mm -hmm. And uh, to emphasize this idea of longer phrases, you can also uh, keep more consistent tempo. Like ta 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 ti ta 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 If you want to make it redundant, make it more uh, gradual. I didn't hope I didn't play too loud. <laughs> yeah. And then when you're playing this dum bum ba 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 bum with more direction to play. Probably some internet problem. Yeah, I usually freeze. <laughs> yes, yeah, so and now you you're again there. While you were playing, internet stopped working. Uh, when you have these repetitions uh, at the end, ta 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 to make the larger um, crescendo, you can simply start slightly softer. <laughs> And if you could maybe not slow down much, I see that there's a difficult uh, skip there. Maybe you could try one line again. In one direction. Almost good. Do it again. And now start softer as it would be growing noise. And play a little bit slower so you would play the notes. It is not about the tempo, it's just without stopping, like ta 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 ti ta ta ta, you can start in this tempo. Absolutely. So you make the phrases more consistent and longer, so especially in fast playing, it has much more clear destination, it will sound more exciting if you will not uh, make m multiple stops, more consistent tempo. And simply when you have different episodes, check which episodes have the same tempo. Okay. Um, you don't have to practice in very fast tempo to do this. It is just about not stopping rather. Okay. Hmm? Don't turn on my... Okay, so now we can hear you. <laughs> Were you able to hear us previously? Yes. Okay, so welcome to our conversation. How are you today? Good. How are you? Good, thank you. So, uh, everybody played and uh, I guess we are ready for you now. So what do you play for us today? It is uh, French sweet. French sweet? Okay, let's play. Thank you. 
You played the whole suite. No oh, great. For how long have you been pl playing this suite already? A month. A month. Wow, this is great, and you memorized it. Yeah, uh, very beautiful playing, guys. Let's say some suggestions and uh, comments in general. George, you start. Uh, I like the dynamic, and he's precise. He's very precise, true, yes. Everything is good. <laughs> okay, anything else? Uh, no. Okay. Anastasia, would you add something? It sounded good, but my internet kind of broke out a couple times, so I didn't hear the full thing, but it sounded good. I liked uh, the articulation and the shaping of the music. Yes, and uh, we had two suites to today, English and French suites. Do you know why it is French and English and there are also Italian suites called partitas? Uh, why Bach called them this way, do you know? So Bach wrote six suites and he loved this number. He, he wrote um, many uh, compositions which he would repeat in the same amount of uh, like the same in same numbers. Like he he liked seven, he liked six, some you so uh, he imitates the manner of Italian masters, it, Italian musicians in his partitas. And he includes Italian dances, Italian um, way of writing music, and uh, emphasizes the Italian style in general. So Bach loved uh, copying other pieces, no, not his own. He admired Rivaldi, he loved the music of Couperin. Apparently, Bach and Couperin had some correspondence. They were sending music to each other. Um, the, the correspondence in between them is still missing. But apparently, French suites are inspired by music of Rameau and Couperin. Uh, by imitating someone's style, Bach was, would practice. He would never stop developing his style. He would always keep uh, learning. And uh, he would take some piece like Vivaldi's concerto for violin, and he would turn it into the harpsichord concerto, making transcription. By doing this transcription, he would learn a lot. And uh, he w was always trying to make each style better, kind of making it uh, in his own manner, not just imitating, but also expressing something new from his own point of view. So this is why we have French suites, English suites, and partitas with Italian suites. Uh, partitas are imitating Italian style, like Vivaldi, Friscabaldi, and many others. Um, then French suites are inspired by Couperin and Rameau, and you will see there are some dances which were used only in French suites, and also there are uh, ornaments which are uh, used in French style. French suites are most decorated. And English suites are imit uh, imitation of uh, style of virgin virginalist from Britain. Uh, so, yes. so this is the difference. And, uh, I thought that you you played very beautifully your French suite. It sounded very French. It had uh, many nice uh, decorations. Uh, I just thought that you you play repeats. When you play repeats, it can change something. When you repeat, um, when you repeat one part and then you uh, repeat the same way, it doesn't really make sense because again, this music was written for the harpsichord. Um, so uh, when you repeat on harpsichord, you will not have dynamic, but you will have some decorations which you could add, and you would 
uh, be able to change uh, articulation. So when you repeat each episode, let's say in minuet or saraband, especially saraband is the most decorated when you repeat, you could add chords which you roll, how you could change the music. You cannot change much. You cannot add many notes or something like this. You cannot recompose, of course. You need to respect the text, but at the same time, you can do something different. You can change dynamic when you repeat. Let's say you played in mezzo forte, the second time can be slightly softer or louder uh, otherwise. Uh, you could add a little bit of uh, ornaments. I, I saw there are some suggestions in different um, editions and you could add mordens or trills at the end. First time goes without trills as written and second time you can add trills and it will be very much in the tradition. Uh, on harpsichord, definitely you would change some articulation and I would use it on piano as well. Why not? It would make it more interesting. So it is like you represent the music as it is written and then second time you do something with it uh, to be creative. You interpret it more. And in Saraband, if you play some chords together, second time you can roll them. The same in some other ones where you have like uh, ending with uh, chords which um, you could just simply roll like melodic line instead of just playing them straight. So this would be my suggestion. Okay, so let's all unmute now. Let's clap again for each other. That's great. Let's clap. So, everybody is great. And I look at the screen, I'm sending you applause. Do you see? Yeah. And, and thumbs up. Keep practicing. You are in good shape, and we will look forward to play again for each other in live setting, right? Have a great day, everybody. Meeting Bye. is over. Bye.